Good morning, Light Lions. I hope everybody is doing okay. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed your VBS. And I hope you guys are getting ready for school. I know things are still kind of crazy right now, but let's just be, you know, adaptable and just be willing to work with our teachers, all right? So I'm going to pray and then we'll get started, okay? So let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and put our hands together. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for being with us and just giving us the opportunity to continue school and continue majority of our lives, even though there is the coronavirus going on. So Lord, we ask that you protect us, keep us safe, and Lord, just place your hand on anybody who is affected, that you would heal them and uh, just bring them from this disease, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, so today who we're going to learn about is this magnificent person named Job. Not Job, Job. All right. So this is Job, you know, normal guy. He really loved God. And, you know, he had a wife, he had kids. But the thing about Job is he was really, really blessed. All right. When we talk about blessed, he was rich. He had a lot of stuff for back then. So Job, you know, his family, he had 10 children. He had 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 ox, 500 donkeys, right? And back then, he was like the richest guy around. Now, one day, the devil came up to the Lord, right? And he goes, oh, God, I, I don't think you have anybody on earth who truly loves you, right? And God looked at the devil and he said, what are you talking about? There's definitely at least somebody who is, you know, truly loving of me. They truly want to be my servant. And the devil said, no, I don't think so. So the, so God, he goes, okay, well then take a look at Job. And the devil says, all right, let's make a bet. I bet you I can make Job curse you uh, just by doing things to you to him right and the lord said you know what you can do anything you want to job as long as you don't kill him so the devil said all right that's what i'm gonna do so what the devil did was he killed all of job's animals all the sheep all the camels all the oxes all the uh, donkeys right and then another thing he did was he killed job's children Okay, the devil sent a tornado and he just swept them all up and everybody was dead, right? So the only people that were left is Job and his wife, okay? So Job and his wife, you know, they're, you know, mourning, meaning they're sad because they just lost their family. They just lost all of their property. They lost their home, right? And the wife was talking to Job, right? Almost like Ajima status, right? <laughs> and she was basically saying, Job, you see, this, this is what happens when you aren't a true servant of God. Now, mind you, Job, he never missed an offering to God. Every time there was an offering that he needed to make, he would always make sure he made it. And he would always have people over at his house because you know, he wanted to share his wealth with other people. But Job, he knew that he hadn't done anything. Yet his wife was like, oh, you've done this, this, and this. And he told her, no, I haven't. What are you talking about? And she said, you know what? You need to, like, repent and you need to turn away from whatever you're doing. But he was like, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, God is testing me. Don't you understand that? Of course, she didn't really understand, right? Because nobody really knows what the devil is capable of. So, while they were, you know, elsewhere, uh, Job had three of his friends find him. And those three friends came up and, you know, they wanted to comfort Job because he just lost his family, all of his wealth, things like that. 
So that's what they did, but for seven days and seven nights, they sat with Job, right? Now, before all that, they found Job like this. It was to he was so beat up and mangled, right? That they didn't even recognize him. He actually had to say, "Hey, my friends, it's me. Like, what are you doing here?" And they said, "Oh my gosh, it's it's Job." And so for seven days they sat with him, but you know you would think that for seven days they would be like, "Oh, Job, everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna help you." Things like that. That's not what happened. For seven days in a row, all three of his friends basically were telling Job, "Hey." You did something wrong. You're not repenting, and that's why God is punishing you. Like, what they said was, look at you. You're diseased. You've lost everything. You have no family. You have no property. God is punishing you because you created or you did a major sin. And Job, he kept telling them, like, no, that's not what's going on. I am a righteous man, and God would not, you know, do this just on a whim right and he tried to explain like i haven't done anything wrong i have committed no sins but everybody everybody was like look at you look at how ugly you are look at how poor you are god is cursing you because of that so at this point you know job was just getting mad at his friends and he was like you guys are just terrible friends right can you imagine if none of your friends believed you And they just believe that you're some kind of evil person or something like that. It's not fair. It's not right. So, you know, eventually, God, he steps in. And, you know, he speaks to Job. And he's like, you know, Job, like, I get that you were sad and that you were down. And you may have thought that I left you, but I didn't. The reason why you had all these things happen to you is because, you know, I let it happen. I didn't want it to happen to you, but it needed to happen. And Job understood, right? Job realized that God is capable of all things. He even said to God, like, you are the one who created the world. You're the one who created the universe. You're the one who gave me my life. And you're the one who blessed me with all the things that I had. And he said, Lord, I'm sorry if I ever doubted you or if I ever misspoke about you. And God said, you know, he accepted Job's apology. But God was also very angry at Job's three friends. Because Job's three friends kept saying, oh, God is punishing you and, you know, he doesn't love you, things like that. And God said to him, to all three of them like why would you speak lies about me I love all my children I love Job more than you will ever know and so he forced all three of Job's friends to not only apologize to Job but also apologize to God by making an offering but he also said I'm gonna make it so that if Job prays for you for your forgiveness I will forgive you And the reason why he said that was because he was really pleased with Job and the work that he did. Okay. So after all this had happened, God was like, you know what? I'm going to give unto you double of everything. Right. So when Job had overcome all this and he spoke with God, God blessed him with another family and he had 20 children rather than 10. He had 14,000 sheep rather than 7,000. He had 6,000 camels rather than 3,000. He had a thousand versus, you know, a thousand ox versus 500 ox and a thousand donkeys versus 500 donkeys. So... Why is the story of Job very important? The reason is Job was not being punished. He was being tested. A lot of times we think bad things happen to us because God doesn't love us. That's not true. God always loves us. But a lot of the things that happen to us is because God is saying, you need to go through a test or a trial. And he puts us through those trials not to punish us, but because he wants us to learn from them. 
and to really just rely on God. If Job hadn't trusted in God, yes, his suffering would have ended, but at the same time, God would have walked away from Job, and that would have been a terrible thing. But because Job was so adamant about, you know, loving God and just remembering that everything that he had was because of God, God was very pleased with him. And he tested him in the hardest way possible, and Job passed. So we just got to remember that not all bad things happen because of the fact that God punishes us, but sometimes it's because we just need to learn something that God can only teach us by giving us a very, very hard lesson. Okay? All right, so that's it for today. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, Just be safe out there and make sure that you guys are constantly washing your hands, okay? All right, so I'm going to close this out in prayer. So let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and put our hands together. Dear Lord, thank you for just teaching us about Job and how the trials that we face are not exactly punishments, but they are gifts because you trust us to overcome those trials, Lord. I know that we are not the greatest servants. We are not the most loyal children. And we're not the most loving people, Lord, but I ask that you give us the heart to change and the ability to understand where your heart comes from, Lord, and to just trust in you uh, without a doubt, Lord. Thank you for everything. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay, guys, be safe out there. Bye.